Okay, back for another SPSS tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover correlated groups t-tests. So remember that a, in a correlated groups or a paired samples t-test, we are comparing to, we're looking to see if there's a difference between two groups of observations, but those groups come from the same participants, okay? Um, so we're interested in, in two groups of variables that are measured in the same people at different times, okay? And in this particular data set, we can represent that by saying, um, did the bikers in our data set get different numbers of citations in 2013 and 2014? So if we look at our data, for every single biker in our data set, regardless of what age group they were in or regardless of what type of motorcycle they rode, um, we have data for how many citations they got in 2013 and in 2014. So what we can do is say, on average, were there more citations in 2013 compared to 2014? Were there more citations compared to 2014 compared to 2013? Or more generally, can we say, was there a different number of citations in 2013 and 2014? Okay? <clears throat> so let's talk about how we do that. So in SPSS, we go up here to Analyze. We go down to Compare Means. And then we move down to the fourth option, which is paired samples t-test. I click on that. And now I want to point out that SPSS, this is going to look a little different than other things that we've done in SPSS. SPSS considers for a paired samples t-test, it needs uh, variables that you want to pair together. Now, in any kind of two-group t-test, independent samples t-test and paired samples t-test, we have two variables. We have a nominal variable, which indicates which group the observations come from. And we have the continuous measure, which indicates the thing that we want to see is different across two groups. Well, in SPSS, if we want to do a paired samples t-test, our continuous measure is actually represented by two different variables in our data set. Right? So we have the number of citations in 2013 and the number of citations in 2014. Think of this as just an overall number of citations and then whichever variable, SPSS variable, these citations belong to tell you which group that they're in. So our grouping variable would be the year, 2013 or 2014, right? So the data is not necessarily represented in SPSS the way that we would represent it in the problem if we were doing it by hand, but that's okay. SPSS will fix that for us. What we have to do is we have to tell SPSS that these are the two variables that represent the pair that we want to, to compare. So what I do is I move my number of citations in 2013 into the first box here and then the number of citations in 2014 into the second box. So I want to make sure that because these are the groups that I want to compare, that they're both in the same row and they're part of the same pair of variables. So essentially what this is going to let, it's what it's telling SPSS to do is to say that this variable, number of citations in 2013, actually represents the first group within my, within my grouping variable. And this number of citations in 2014 variable actually represents the observations in the second group of my grouping variable. Okay, so I've actually turned these two variables into one variable with two different groups. Okay, so just to kind of keep it straight that that's how we have to tell SPSS to do a paired samples t-test. Our two groups, uh, we actually have to have different a different variable for each group so that SPSS can compare those across the same participants. All right, so once we've done that, click on options. Again, there's nothing really to do in the options except unless we wanted to adjust our confidence interval percentages. We don't need to do that, so we'll click cancel, um, click OK, <clears throat> and I get three different boxes of statistics now for a correlated groups paired samples t-test. Okay. The first box just gives me my basic descriptive statistics. So for each of the two sets of observations, I get a mean, a sample size, standard deviation, and standard error of the mean. So the average number of, of citations 
for all of the 120 bikers in my data set for 2013 was 3.83 and 2014 was 3.13. Um, again, there's 120 participants total. So I have 120 in each group, but we'll notice later that that doesn't turn into a sample size of 240. My sample size is still 120. I just have two observations for each. Okay. Um, and then the standard deviations and the standard error of the means are, are represented there. The second box I get is actually, it gives us a correlation. Now we haven't, haven't covered any correlations yet, so we're just going to kind of skip over this box for now. But this is actually representing the correlation between the, the, these two variables, the number of citations in 2013 and the number of citations in 2014. Um, it would tell us whether there's a correlation between those two variables. But let's skip down to the paired samples t-test box. So <clears throat> what this gives me is it gives me my difference variable. Um, so what this mean in the first box here represents is the average number of citations in 2013 minus the number of citations in 2014, right? So this is actually the mean difference. And so positive numbers would indicate that, that on average people had more citations in 2013 than 2014, and a negative mean would indicate that on average people had more citations in 2014 compared to 2013, right? Because we're taking 2013 minus 2014. We get a positive number, which indicates that people generally had more citations in 2013, and we can kind of confirm that by looking at the means of the two groups up here the mean of 2013 was actually higher than 2014. <clears throat> we get a standard deviation for that mean difference. So the standard deviation was 2.88 or close to three citations. Uh, we have a standard error of that mean. We get the 95% confidence interval of that mean difference. Um, and then we get our T observed value, right? So this is what we care about for our T test. <clears throat> our T observed value is 2.66. That's a positive value, again, indicating that the citations were higher in 2013 compared to 2014. We get the degrees of freedom for that T test, uh, 119. So I'll just, you know, you just point out that that's our sample size of 120 minus one. And remember that the fact that these both have sample sizes of 120 in a paired samples T test just means that it's the same participants in both groups. We have 120 total participants. We had two different measurements for each of those participants. And so our overall degrees of freedom is 120 minus one or 119. Then we get our p-value, our significance value. P-value is 0 0.009, that's less than 0 0.005. So there's a very low probability that my null hypothesis is true in this test my null hypothesis is that the mean difference equals zero uh, in the population. And so this low p-value says there's a very low probability that the mean difference is zero. And so I would reject that null hypothesis and I would conclude that there actually is a difference. And based on these statistics I see, the descriptive statistics I see in the first box and this mean difference here, what I would conclude is that in general, all bikers got higher numbers of citations in 2013 compared to 2014, right? A couple of final things to point out on t-test, and this will apply to t-tests in both the independent samples t-test and the paired samples t-test. Number one is SPSS doesn't allow us to do directional tests. SPSS, by default, only lets us do non-directional tests. This, this isn't totally problematic. We can get around that, but we have to do a little work by hand to get around it. So let's say we wanted to do a directional test. Let's say we wanted to predict that people got specifically higher numbers of citations in 2013 compared to 2014, all right? Let, let's say that that was my alternative hypothesis from the start. What I have to do if I have a directional test in either a paired samples or an independent samples t-test is I have to remember that whatever my p-value is down here in this significance column, you see it tells us here it's two-tailed, but we want a one-tailed uh, value. To get what the p-value would be for a one-tailed test, we just have to divide this two-tailed value 
in half, right? So my significance for a one-tailed test would be about 0 0.0045 because I would be dividing this, this p-value in half in order to get what it would be for a one-tailed test. Now the only other thing that we have to keep in mind when we do that is we have to manually look and see if uh, the appropriate mean is greater than the other mean. So if I hypothesize that um, that the number of citations would be higher in 2013, then okay, this would be consistent with that hypothesis uh, because the mean average is actually higher and I would be dividing my p-value here by two and I would get the, the significance value associated with that and that would lead me to make my hypothesis decision to reject the null hypothesis. If it was the other way around, if my if my number of citations in 2014 was actually higher than the number of citations in 2013, then I don't even care what my p-value is anymore. Because no matter what it is, these mean differences wouldn't even be in the right direction, and I'm never going to reject my hypothesis, my null hypothesis when that happens, right? But so just keep in mind, if we want to do a one-tailed test, we actually have to divide this p-value in half. And that goes for the paired samples t-test or the independent samples t-test. The other thing to keep in mind is SPSS does not give us effect sizes. So if we want an effect size associated with the t-test, we actually have to calculate that by hand. Now SPSS will give us all the information that we need to plug into our by hand calculations to do that, but we're going to actually have to do the calculations by hand if we want that effect size ourselves. Okay, so that's everything for a paired samples t-test. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, Check the other two tutorials that I've put together on one sample t-test and independent samples t-test, and hopefully that gets you on your way to being able to use SPSS to solve these types of questions.